What's up, y'all? It's Ty. In this video today, we're going to be taking a deeper dive into the cards that got leaked last night in NBA 2K25. My team, we're going to be briefly talking about their stats and badges before taking a deeper dive into, okay, what does their release looks like? look like? Are they going to be good? Are they going to be usable? What are the prices going to be like? So, yes, we dropped a worth it video. So, if you want the in-depth analysis, go back to yesterday's video. But briefly talking about these cards, I think that this drop has to be the worst drop for the time that we have seen all year long. And I know that's, a, that's an opinion that a lot of people might disagree with, but I genuinely believe that if you open packs today in this drop, you're either like a big Jermaine Neal or Steve Francis fan. Otherwise, there is absolutely no reason to open packs whatsoever in these packs. Now, we will see if there are there going to be any challenges posted in a game that you guys can grind out maybe for like a free 10 bucks stuff like that. But that's really it. As far as this drop specifically, I'm not the biggest fan of it. So that's kind of where I stand on it. But we are going to be going through some of these guys, some of their releases, talking about whether the cards are going to be good or not. Now, you guys can do this for all the cards that you guys want to see. All you guys got to do is go in here, find the right team, see exactly what these cards are going to look like. I feel like I've played Mike Bibby one time, played against him, and the card was pretty good. Like, he's not super long, lengthy. Okay, maybe not. I don't know. But... I feel like his release is fine. I don't know. He, he's not bad. I, I feel like, you know, when I first shot with the release, I'm like, ew. But as I'm shooting more and more with Mike Bibby, his release is not bad. It's fine. You can definitely green it. You can definitely time it. As far as his leaner, it's the normal leaner. That's fine. He's got a 6'2 frame. He's going to be fine. Now, is Mike Bibby worth picking up for your squad? Short answer, no, he's not. Like genuinely, he I don't even know what he gives you over a guy like Mario Chalmers. And you guys can say I'm gassing Mario Chalmers, but I want to do something for this video. I want you guys to look at Mike Bibby, and then I'm going to show you guys Mario Chalmers. And I'm going to ask you guys who the better point guard is. So for Mike Bibby, he's 6'2", he's got 94 three ball, can barely, yeah, I don't even know if he can, Doug, 93 ball in a defense, so okay, 94 speed, one on famer, 17 on gold, two on silver with one on bronze, including no on ball menace. So total badges, guys, Mike Bibby comes with, uh, comes with 21 base badges. Now, let's go look at the, uh, let's go look at the Mario Chalmers from a couple of days ago, 6'2", same height, 93 ball, he can actually dunk, 86 ball handle, defensive stats are better, he comes with 26 base badges, including on ball menace now furthermore to further my point i'll go take mario chalmers into shoot around here like i said i'm not trying to sit here and, and sell you guys on mario chalmers i'm trying to uh tell you guys not to uh to waste all your all your coins on mike Bibby. now when you take mario chalmers in here to shoot around here's what you're looking at two odd spots from the corners release wise immaculate better than mike Bibby. so Again, I'm not telling you guys that you need to go buy Mario Chalmers, although I do love him for his specific value. What I am telling you is Mike Bibby's not better than Mario Chalmers. So take that for what it's worth. Mar uh, Mike Bibby is for sure and not worth getting on this game. So Rip Hamilton, Corey Maggette as well uh, for the Diamonds. Now, I don't know for sure if I will be able to find uh, Corey Maggette in freestyle. Now, I'm going to try... But I just don't know if that's going to be the case. Now, as far as uh, Rip Hamilton, I know I will be able to find him. But yeah, with Corey Maggette, I don't know. And if I miss him, I apologize. But I'm just I'm just not sure if I'm going to be able to uh, to shoot around with him in this game. So something to kind of definitely think about. But for, for Richard Hamilton, guys, his stats stink. Like, it, genuinely in-game, his stats stink. As far as movement, his movement, I feel like in every 2K isn't good. His release is mid-mediocre. Richard Hamilton stinks on this game. I mean, that, I, I'm going to go back and show you guys his stats badges because the card's going to stink. His release is not good. It's not nearly as good as it's been in past years. His fade is not good. His stats are absolutely dog water. 6-7, that's the only thing he gives you on the court. Defensively, mid-81 speed isn't good. This card stinks, guys. This card in Richard Hamilton is not good on this game. Now, I'm not going to sit up here and tell you guys that there's a Sapphire shooting guard that's better than him, but I do think Marquise Daniels is going to be 90% of what that Richard Hamilton genuinely can do. So, look, I'm not trying to hate on a card because, again, if you want to use him and have fun with him, do what you have to do. But Richard Hamilton, I just want you guys to know and realize, is not going to be good on this game. So, as long as you know and realize that, like, I, I, I could care less whether you run the card or not. 
I just want to inform you that the card overall is not going to be great, not going to be ideal for you guys. Now, I don't believe, I think this is past Corey Maggette's time, right? Like, I don't think Corey Maggette is a card that I'm actually going to be able to shoot around with, but I have heard good things about Corey Maggette. So as far as the diamonds are concerned, I do think Corey Maggette probably is going to be your best option. I mean, he is the most complete diamond, 6'6", 86, 3 ball, side of the ball, handle defensively and speed solid enough, and even badge-wise, is a lot better than anybody else we saw. As far as Antonio Davis, he can't shoot, so I'm not going to show his release. Dunking-wise, good, speed good. The problem is he's an inside big at 6'9". That's the big problem with the card. Now, let's talk about Steve Francis, Jermaine O'Neal. Briefly going over their stats for Steve Francis. He's a little undersized, 88, 3 ball, 97 ball handle. Uh, speed good badge wise okay Jermaine O'Neal's stats and badges are actually good can shoot good uh defense overall badge wise fantastic like Jermaine O'Neal looks really good however Jermaine O'Neal's release is really 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 poor so those are the important things to kind of notice with uh cards as you do go through and break it down talk about who is worth picking up for your specific squad now Let's talk about Jermaine O'Neal first, because I actually like Jermaine O'Neal in this game. I think this card could be good. His player build's fantastic as well, but y'all see the release. I mean, release-wise, it's one of the slowest releases in the entire game. As far as trying to shoot with the stick with him, you have better luck doing anything. I mean, his, his, his shot is absolutely horrible. Uh, it, you know, if you shoot with square, it's better, but it's still slow. So just realize what you're getting out of Jermaine O'Neal, like... His release is so slow, and that's going to hurt the card. He's still playable for sure, but a guy like Jaron Jackson Jr. walks circles around this card. And so, like, that's my real, really, approach to Jermaine O'Neal. Like, I don't want to say the card is unplayable, but what I would say is, like, just kind of be pretty hesitant when it comes down to using uh, him as far as the card. Now, I don't know. Is Steve Francis on the all-time uh, Rockets? Okay, perfect. He is. I was hoping he would be. I figured he would. Now, for Steve Francis, here's what you're getting. I feel like in the past, his release has been good at times, but I feel like in the past couple of years, his release has kind of, you know, gotten worse and worse. So, let's talk about it. And I think the real bad part is the upper part of his release. Like, his, you know, base is good. It's really the upper part of that release. Now, Steve Francis is another card. I feel like you're going to have to shoot with square. I feel like, you know, the stick with this card might be cooked, as I am, you know, trying to, to get the hang of it. But it just doesn't feel great. I feel like the upper part of his release leaves a lot to be desired. Now, again, as far as his movement, some people are going to argue, well, Ty, you just can't dribble. So that's why you're not going to like or use Steve Francis. If that was the case, then I would tell you guys, I can't can't dribble in this game but if you want to dribble there's better point guards than steve francis as hard as it is to really dribble on this game dribbling is cooked that's where i'm at with the cards so realistically from top to bottom this content drop stinks it absolutely stinks yes if there's a free 10 box and you want to grind it do it and then out of that 10 box if you have to happen to pull like a jermaine o'neill or Corey mcgetty those cards are absolutely usable but do not rip packs today. I'm telling you, none of these cards are going to sell for that much anyways because they all are dog water. Please do not lock in this set either because all the cards you lock in are going to be unusable. Drop a like on the video, guys. Subscribe if you're new and as always, man, I love you guys. Have a blessed day.